Yeah, uh, May hey, I? You ready? Mumper. Gentlemen. The year was 1922. It had been a, a tough spring. The rains hadn't come like they should have. Summer was worse. The hay was short that year. The mules were kicking. And the bales were small. Old Chester Mumper. He was, uh, he was working hard. He was trying to support his family. He was out in the field 12, 8, 4 hours a day. <laughs> he, uh, just trying to earn a living, you know? He was a man against the elements. He was bailing. Bailing like his life depended on it. And it did. <laughs> oh, God. So, him and his mule, they got all the fields bailed. And they went and drug all the bales back to the old farmhouse. Don't touch me. The farmstead was... <laughs> Gleaming in the dustness. <laughs> and uh, in the distance, you could hear the roosters mm -mm. hollering and laughing. <laughs> as the passing of another day. <laughs> they definitely laughed. Well, the passing of another day. So, here he was. It was late. He could have went to sleep. Gone and seen Matilda, but instead, <laughs> but instead he went to work because it was a drought year, <laughs> and he was fighting just to live, keep his family fed, you know. Well, yeah. <laughs> so the old mule drug all the hell the uh, hay bales, and they got all the bales out there. Right next to the big old barn. The barn on the northeast side there with the uh, big spire on it. Mm. How it would gleam in the sunset. And he went to stacking, he did. <laughs> you hear this? He went to stacking. And it was bale upon bale. Straw and straw and straw and straw. <laughs> up a ladder, down a ladder, up a ladder, down a ladder. You hear it? The old wooden planks creaking as he walks across the loft. Pulling up the barn. Mm. <laughs> Tough year. So there he was. Stacking hay, bailing it up when he could have been home with the wife. <sighs> Tragedy struck. <laughs> One of those planks wasn't hammered in so tight. He went and tripped on it. You believe that? He tripped and he fell. He fell on down, the whole way down, went to an old instrument. <laughs> this instrument was a pitchfork that he had used throughout the day. Uh, it pierced him. <laughs> it pierced him like a brand pierces a Years ass. <laughs> Can you imagine? <laughs> right through the old scrotes. <laughs> that fleshy middle part. <laughs> oh. 
How is he supposed to for, support his family? <laughs> With a pitchfork stuck through his balls. <laughs> <laughs> He shrieked and he hollered <laughs> like an old coon cat in the heat. <laughs> but no one heard him because they were all out to dinner. So he drug himself. Pitchfork stuck in the balls and all. <laughs> it was rusted. And worn from years of use. <laughs> many, many summers has that pitchfork been used by him, and now he was being used by it. <laughs> oh. Just imagine the pain wrenching through the testicles. <laughs> now that was a man. He drug himself the whole way to the farmstead, up on the porch, blood smeared across the lawn from the testicles. <laughs> he drags himself in. There's no doctors back then. What you do? What do you do when you pierce your balls with a pitchfork? <laughs> Tell me. He had no choice. He had no choice, gentlemen. He patched him up himself. Used his wife's towel. <laughs> and a whole mess of twine. Mess of twine. <laughs> Tried to patch it up as good as he could. But the pain was severe. Can you imagine? <laughs> <laughs> that old pitchfork that had been his friend for all those years had become his enemy. His fatal blow. So, days went by. The bales weren't stacked. The barn wasn't filled. The Mumper family was a hungry family. And he was bedridden because of his testicles getting shot to bits. <laughs> Days went by, as I said. The bacteria that was prevalent in that day, it populated. And it grew. And it spread and it infected. To a malicious malady. <laughs> Turn his balls green. <laughs> Gangrene. <laughs> his fever spiked to a 118. What? You ever had a 118 fever? <laughs> He hallucinated the weirdest things. <laughs> things that aren't natural to a man. <laughs> Meanwhile, his, his testicles, they grew from the malady. and became like melons in an orchard. <laughs> he became frail and pale. <laughs> and the infection grew past the melons into his inside workings. <laughs> and the inside workings took to it as well. <laughs> Matilda was hungry. And the chillins too. <laughs> the mule was bored. <laughs> they hadn't gone the field, <laughs> stuck in a paddock. They didn't know when Chester would be back. But he never came back. <laughs> Can you believe it? 
1922. <laughs> Balls explode. <laughs> <laughs> and your family starves. <laughs> As a result of your trusty old pitchfork <laughs> that you landed on when you fell. <laughs> Tragedy, really. <laughs> sure you can relate. <laughs> yep. <laughs> We've all had to feed our family, and this is just a sacrifice Chester was willing to make. When you think about it, what are your testicles in your life as compared to your family? Your wife, your beautiful wife, five foot two inches, three hundred twenty-five pounds. <laughs> Two uh, retarded children <laughs> and your mule. <laughs> Can you put a dollar sign on that? <laughs> Can you say that. what's worth and what's not? <laughs> Do with your balls exploding and all. <laughs> and that's the story of Chester Mumper, <laughs> as told by his great great grand nephew. <laughs> Turn it off! <laughs>